I'm sitting in what they call the pro stock. I'm going to get out of this as gently, I hope, as I got into it. And that's about as close as I want to come to racing one of these machines. Right now, we're going to have a look at the pro stockers. Now, visually, these may look very much like the RV, but they are quite different. For one thing, the pro stocker is required to keep the steel shell that came with the car rolled out of the factory. It must not be changed. The steel shell must remain, and there is a minimum weight of 2,700 pounds. They are allowed to make certain lightweight modifications, but they must stay above that weight minimum. They are hot, but not as hot as the funny car. Herb McCandless, right here in the Deer Lane in the Sox and Martin entry, against Bob Yowell. McCandless in the duster defeats Bob Yowell. In the Plymouth in the far lane, and the time for McCandless, 10.02 seconds. For Yowell, 10.14 seconds. Again, very close. The Pro Stockers now will come wheeling around the corner. Harlan Banky of Akron, Ohio, in a Plymouth duster, running against Herb McCandless of Burlington, North Carolina. He is in the Stockton Martin duster right here. Both these men have been absolutely superb so far. Their starts have been impeccable, their equipment is at a peak. This could be one of the quickest pro stock races you have ever seen. Alan Banky won here in 1968 at the Nationals, winning the Super Stock Championship. But this pro stock category is a little hotter. Red, white, blue is McCandless. Banky's on the far side. Pro stock title on the line right now. They're shifting all the way through, and it is close. And it's McCandless, the winner. 9.981 seconds. And hear this, Banky, 9.983 seconds, and both men get 138.03 miles an hour for their top speed. And let's take another look. The top speed is measured in the last 66 feet at the very end of the course, and you can see the candlest won it by the smallest of margins. You never meant to have in your life, Herb. Congratulations. Thank you very much. That's the first big one for you, huh? Yes, in the pro stock, I'm really happy. I just don't know what to say. <laughs> Ronnie Stocks would be sitting down under that tree kind of green. Yeah. <laughs> Ronnie's he had some transmission trouble. It's just one of those things. It's, I'd really be lucky and fast a lot of times. Really had to put the pressure on equipment this year, though, didn't you? Yes, we really did. We really pushed the cars hard. It's the toughest field of cars I've ever seen. Herb, you did a great job. Congratulations. Thank you very much, sir. Our coverage of the Winter Nationals here in Pomona continues now with the Pro Stock competition coming up next. The official announcing voice for the NHRA, Steve Evans, will bring you up to date with all the expertise. Steve, the pro stock competition offers some mighty good matchups here, but I'm wondering, first of all, is this the type of machinery you might find on the street with some modifications? Yes, it is, Tom. In reality, these are the hottest of Detroit's high-performance muscle cars, as they're advertised. Dodges, Plymouths, Chevrolets, virtually every make and model represented. However, they're very, very expensive machines to prepare for drag racing. When these, pros, when these pros get through with them, there's really not too much left that originated in Detroit. The rules are very strict, but they do allow some modifications. We'll see 16 of the best, and they'll eliminate themselves down to eight. And we've got Bagshaw and Landy coming out first, Steve. Yes, we do. Dick Landy, a professional driver for the Dodge Division of Chrysler Corporation. He lives in Northridge, California. All of these pro stockers are equipped with four-speed transmissions, and they're really one of the most difficult cars in drag racing to drive, as we'll see the driver very busy inside that cockpit. Here's Bill Bagshaw. Bagshaw, also a professional drag racer from North Hollywood, California, calls himself the Red Light Bandit. Both drivers are away with green starts. A beautiful duel as they hammer the four speeds through the quarter mile. Dick Landy by no more than half a car length. Bud Palmer back with the Winter National Drag Racing Championships in Pomona, California. We're getting ready for the Pro Stock Car Semifinals, and here's how they go. It's 
Arlen Vanke against Don Grothier, and Bill Grumpy Jenkins faces Don Carlton. Now, this is a pro stock car, which is quite similar to an average family car, except that major internal modifications are permitted to the engine, which must be the same make as the car. Oh, you can replace such items as the hood and fenders with lightweight components, but the steel body shell must be retained, and there's the all-important tachometer. These cars move up to 140 mile an hour range in one quarter of a mile. And here's something unique, the wheelie bars to keep the front end from rising too high. A beautiful looking piece of machinery. And here's Arlen Banke of Akron, Ohio. He'll be in the far lane in yellow. He's facing Don Grothier in this red, white, and blue car from Oklahoma City, a former champion here. Here we go. There's the yellow and the green and they're off. A good start, tight race. That's Vanke in yellow. Grothier on the inside. Grothier is pulling up, and Grothier is just going to make it. The time for Grothier, 9.79, 141.00 miles per hour. Bill Grumpy Jenkins in white against Don Carthen of Royal Oaks in the black car there. This is the other semifinal. Bill, a former champion here in a light car with a small V8. They're all set to go. There's a start, they're off, a beautiful start by Bill Jenkins. Carlton's coming after him, looks like Jenkins all the way. And he's the winner, 9.70, 140.62 miles per hour. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we move into the quarterfinal round of eight of the Super Pro Stocks. This quarterfinal round of eight features the eight quickest cars from the qualifying round up for their first elimination. In lane one, it's the Bill White Mike Ross entry from Hammond, Indiana. A car owned by Joe Satmary, sponsored by Vanzinus Auto Parts, 73 Camaro. He qualified number seven at 976, 147 miles an hour. In the tower lane, Kenny Perry and Uncle John Bay's machine from Lockport, Illinois, sponsored by John Bay's used cars, the 1973 Camaro. Kenny Perry qualified in at 9.54, 147 miles per hour. Spectator lane entrant, Billy White, Tower Lane, John Bay's car driven by Kenny Perry. Both of them are about ready now. Kenny Perry bringing the car up to the starting line. Lane number one, Bill White down there apparently has a problem with that Camaro. He lost fire in it. And we'll have to wait momentarily and see. They're telling him to cut it off. I believe he lost something in the engine. It looks like moisture is gathering underneath the car in lane number one. So the tower lane, Kenny Perry, down there set. And we'll get the odd man run here in this pro stock competition. Kenny Perry going down, getting the odd man run in the tower lane. And he stops the computers at a tough 9.78 with a top mile per hour of 144, staying right in stride, Billy. In the pro stock, Bill Jenkins of Malvern, Pennsylvania, in a 74 Vega at an 8.93 run. His fourth winner national championship to defeat Wayne Gap in a Pinto of Birmingham, Michigan. Gap was 8.94. In the pro stocks, Bob Blidden, who won when his opponent Don Nicholson red light. We start our coverage with the pro stock semifinals. Michigan's Dave Canners in a Hornet, Indiana's Bob Blidden in a Mustang. Remember now, the man that gets to the far end of the strip first makes it to the finals where the big money is. The staging lights show the cars are both in position. Take another look at the finish. Down the strip they go, this 1,320-foot quarter-mile strip. Glidden arrives first in less than nine seconds at 153.84 miles an hour. That from a standing start. Tire burnouts, an interesting, exciting, and necessary preliminary to all drag racing. It cleans the tires and makes them tacky for better traction. Wayne Gap of Michigan, the fastest qualifier, a four-door Maverick, going against three-time Winter Nationals champion Bill Grumpy Jenkins of Pennsylvania. The winner meets Glidden in the final. They're staged and ready to go, and everyone is waiting to see if the fastest qualifier, Gap, will beat the pro, Jenkins. Jenkins red lights. He's off too early, and he gives it to Michigander Wayne Gap. 
Pro Stock Eliminator picking up the action in the second round. Here is Richie Zool from Lindenhurst, Long Island, New York. His competition from Fridley, Minnesota, Warren Johnson, both drivers. The wheel of the big block Camaros. And a close race. At the finish line, it is Warren Johnson, 8.78 seconds. Speed over 156 miles an hour. The losing time, 8.83. These are the most sophisticated, full-bodied, stock car type drag racing vehicles in the world. Dave Canners in the far lane. He's driving the American Motors Hornet matched up against High Point, North Carolina's Roy Hill. Canners hailing from Troy, Michigan. The start all important in this category as it is in all classes of drag racing. Roy Hill in the near lane, Dave Canners in the far lane. Let's watch and see if you can determine who leaves the starting line first. Dave Canners, it appears, out first on Roy Hill. At the finish line, it's going to be very close. Dave Canners by just about a wheel length, recording an 8.88 second elapsed time. The losing time by Roy Hill was an 8.84. So that means that Dave Canners did leave the starting line first, as each lane of the racetrack has its own separate timing equipment, and that's how close it was at the finish. Here is the Monza of Bill Grumpy Jenkins, driven by Larry Lombardo of Malvern, Pennsylvania. His competition, another Monza, Shelby Jester from Abilene, Texas. The Monzas using the smaller Chevrolet engines than their Camaro counterparts. A red light start for Shelby Jester gives the win automatically to Larry Lombardo, but he's not backing out of it. Neither is Jester, 8.81 seconds, the winning time for Larry Lombardo. The final race in round number two action in Pro Stock Eliminator in the near lane from Calverton, Virginia, the big block Camaro of Lee Edwards. In the far lane, the world champion, defending world champ Bob Glidden from Beach Grove, Indiana, driving the Pinto. Another tremendously close race. It's Bob Glidden there first, 8.87 seconds at 154.63 miles an hour. Let's take a ride with a Pro Stock contender and see it from the driver's point of view. The race master light the Pro Stock, sending towards the starting line, please. The staging control director directs his official at the head of the lanes to bring out the Pro Stocks. The next stop for our Pro Stock driver is in the burnout area, where he'll heat, warm the tires, the starter then bringing him up to the starting line. The starter flashes the Christmas tree, amber light, then green, and it's off down 1,320 feet of asphalt. His next stop is the scales, a most important stop, as there he is certified as to the correct weight for the class. His fuel is checked to make sure it's NHRA legal gasoline. He gets his official elapsed time and speed, often the first he knows of what he really ran. If it's in eliminations, it's a winning run. He'll have as little as 20 minutes to be back in the lanes to race again. If it's a losing run, well, it's on the trailer, done for the day. These start out as basic off-the-assembly line Detroit compacts. Then they're highly modified, both in weight reduction and engine modification, to achieve the maximum amount of performance on a weight to cubic inch limitation. Unlike the top fuelers in funny cars, the Pro Stocks retain a passenger car appearance on the interior. Through a quarter mile, they will turn over 150 miles an hour in about eight seconds. Let's take a look now at some of the people who muscle these cars down the quarter mile. Larry Lombardo from Douglasville, Pennsylvania. Lombardo drives for Bill Jenkins. He was the Pro Stock World Champion in 1976. Earlier this year, he won the Winter Nationals in California. Lombardo is married. He and his wife have one child. Ken Dondero, Balboa Island, California. Ken Dondero, he drives a 1977 Pinto. He drives for the Gap and Roush team. He is a former Team Jenkins driver, and he is a bachelor. 
My name is Wally Booth. I'm from Berkeley, Michigan. Wally Booth, he drives an AMC car. In 1976, he won four out of eight national titles, including the Spring Nationals in Columbus, Ohio, and the World Finals in Ontario, California. Warren Johnson, Bradley, Minnesota. Johnson drives a 74 Camaro. He managed to play second to Larry Lombardo last year on the Pro Stock Championship circuit, even though it was his first real effort. He's considered to be one of the top Chevrolet experts in racing. The Pro Stock car is compact and fast, very fast. The driver is very good. Let's go back up to Dave, see how fast and just how good. Thank you, Frank. We're into round number two, racing in Pro Stock Eliminator. Don Nicholson, the low qualifier, he's in the Mustang in the near lane from Atlanta, Georgia. His competition, Dale Evans in the Camaro from Painesville, Ohio. Nicholson not to be headed on this run as he is a train length ahead of Dale Evans. 8.65 seconds, the elapsed time for Nicholson. His speed over 153 miles an hour. Thank you, Steve. Let's go back to racing with Pro Stock Eliminator. Eight cars remain in round number two. This is the new Ford Fairmont of Bob Glidden. His competition, the Chevy Camaro, finishing number seven in the world last season, Richie Zuhl. Zuhl won the Spring Nationals title thus far in 1978. Glidden debuting his brand new car at this event and qualified number one. He's dominated the action as far as times go. Let's see if he can do it on the racetrack when it only counts as to who gets to the finish line first. And this time again, it's Bob Glidden, 8.53 seconds, his speed 152 miles an hour. Joe Sackberry, big block Chevrolet Camaro. We refer to a big block, we mean a larger cubic inch engine that is in the Chevy Monza of Frank Iacotio. Iacotio here on the near side. And a bit of a staging battle seems to be ensuing. They kind of can stage at their own leisure as long as neither one of them has crept into that final staging beam. There's no time limit involved. Finally, they get there and sat Mary with the whole shot. At the finish line, Joe sat Mary, 8.65 seconds. His speed to find 157 miles an hour. The odds-on crowd favorite has to be this man, Larry Lombardo, driving for Bill Grumpy Jenkins against the American Motors car of the M&M Boys, Maskin and Mandy Manorino. Andy Manorino doing the driving. Oh, and what a hole shot for Lombardo. Manorino is almost sound asleep as Lombardo left the starting line and was almost a full car length ahead before Manorino ever moved. Lombardo with the win, 8.64 seconds, 156 miles an hour. The final race in this round of Pro Stock. From Reno, Nevada, the gambler, Mark Yule. Alongside of him, the other American Motors car, this is Wally Booth. Here you see the Christmas tree as if the drivers are looking at it. One amber light, a green light, and the wheels in the air as they leave the starting line. The AMX in the near lane. Camaro in the far lane. And it's Wally Booth with the win. 8.73 seconds, but the big story there is Mark Ewell went 8.67. So Wally Booth with a whole shot. We'll be back from the Summer Nationals in a moment. Now we look to the Pro Stock Final matching those Hoosiers, Bob Glidden and Joe Satmary. And remember, Satmary was the last man to beat Bob Glidden. He did it in May of 1978, and Glidden has not lost a race since that time. Satmary will be running in the far lane. Bob Glidden will be running in the near lane, and they are in the staging area. Pro Stock Jet in his 21st career victory. Only Don Prudhomme has more. Wife out of the crew chief's sons, Billy and Rusty, on the crew, and he's the champ. Pro Stock Eliminator, the tops in engineering in drag racing. These are the factory hot rods, utilizing a car as delivered from the factory, but with lots of modifications. The engines, though, are limited to two four-barrel carburetors, and they must run on gasoline. This is the Chevrolet Camaro of Kevin Roddy from Tucson, Arizona. And has he got a tough component? The world champion, Bob Glidden, 
the low qualifier at the Silver Anniversary Nationals. Creeping into the staging beams comes Glidden, concentrating on that electronic starting device known as the Christmas tree. The wheel's high in the air for Roddy, and maybe a few inches lead for Roddy at that point of the track. But at the finish line, it's Glidden by about a car length. Wife, Etta, the crew chief on Bob Glidden's car, looking on as Bob Glidden pulls out another win and moves into the finals at the U.S. Nationals. This is the Yule brothers and Ken Van Wert. Brother Mark Yule doing the driving against one of the best Camaros ever built. Grumpy's toy, Bill Jenkins, with Larry Lombardo at the wheel. The wheel's high in the air, and Lombardo pulling a quick lead over Mark Yule. And extending it at the finish line as Lombardo wins at 8.70 seconds. We're ready to go into the semifinals of Pro Stock. Here is the low qualifier and the defending world champion, Bob Glidden. This is Frank Iaconio from Totowa, New Jersey. Lee Shepard hails from Arlington, Texas. And the grump himself, Bill Jenkins of Malvern, Pennsylvania. Our first pair, the classic Ford versus Chevrolet matchup, the Ford Fairmont of Bob Glidden against Frank Iaconio in the Chevrolet Camaro. A great lead by both drivers. The wheel's in the air for Iaconio, but Glidden seems to have pulled a slight lead off the starting line. And at the finish, a one-car length victory for Bob Glidden. A quick time, 8.46 seconds. These cars running on gasoline, limited to two four-barrel carburetors, and utilizing a stock production line type automobile with lots of modifications, the factory hot rods. Two of the best Chevrolets in the business, Lee Shepard in the near lane, in the far lane, Bill Jenkins. And Shepard pulls a bit of a lead off the starting line over the grump. And once again, it'll be Lee Shepard against Bob Glidden in the final. The third category of professional competition we're covering here at the U.S. Nationals is Pro Stock. We pick up action in the semifinal round where we see Bob Glidden proudly wearing the big number one, signifying he finished number one in the world last season. Glidden winning his fifth world champion title is based in Whiteland, Indiana, just down the road from Indianapolis. He's racing John Hagen, who comes from St. Paul, Minnesota, driving a 1980 Plymouth Arrow. This has been one of the best years ever for Hagen. He has recently set the NHRA speed record for Pro Stock at over 164 miles an hour, but he'll need every bit of that power to eke out a win over Bob Glidden. Glidden, the winningest racer ever in NHRA history with 34 event victories to his credit. Off the starting line they come. The charging pro stockers on gasoline with carburetors. Bob Glidden wins it, 8.44 seconds, but an exceptionally close race by Hagen, the speed 160 miles an hour. As we watch once again, we'll see how close it was at the finish as the speed of Glidden pulled him ahead by about one car length right across the finish line. So Bob Glidden will be advancing into the finals to match up against the winner of this next race, and it will be a classic Ford versus Chevrolet battle in the final because these two cars are both Chevrolets. Lee Shepard locked head to head with Glidden in the chase for the world champion title here in 1981 will be squared off against Don Kuntz. Kuntz, a former modified eliminator racer coming up through the ranks as did Lee Shepard. Both of them trying very hard to put all of their drag racing skills to work here in the semifinals at the U.S. Nationals to win the right to face Bob Glidden in the finals for the Pro Stock Championship. Tremendous amounts of RPM from the engine as the accelerator goes to the floor and the clutch comes out and driving around at just the last few feet is Lee Shepard, 8.45 seconds. Glidden was quicker by one hundredth of a second. Don Coons gave him a race to the finish line as the Coons and Clark Camaro stayed side by side with Lee Shepard just as long as possible. But it was Shepard in the wheel of the rare and Morrison car from Arlington, Texas, winning the right to face Bob Glidden in the final.
Thanks, Steve, and what a great story that should be. But the story here at the Gator Nationals is the semifinal round of Pro Stock Eliminator. Thus far, we've only been watching nitro-burning supercharged cars. Now, we'll take a look at the ultimate factory hot rod, the Pro Stock. It'll be Roy Hill matched against Frank Iaconio in this semifinal round. It'll be an 82 Charger here in the near lane, driven by Hill against Iaconio and his flying Chevrolet, the number two qualifier at a 7.83 second elapsed time. Hill qualified number eight at a 7.96. And remember, these cars are carbureted, running on gasoline. Some rules changes this year have picked up the pace considerably as we see Frank Iaconio with a big lead right off the starting line. And Frank extends that margin of victory as he crosses the finish line about three lengths ahead at a 7.90 second elapsed time. Frank Iaconio winning over Roy Hill. The remaining pair in the semifinal round, the white Camaro, is the car driven by the number one qualifier, Lee Shepard, for the team of Rare and Morrison from Arlington, Texas. The big number one on the window indicates this man, Lee Shepard, is not only the number one qualifier, but the reigning world champion. He'll be racing Pat Musi out of New Jersey, qualified number three at a 7.89, but that 7.77 second elapsed time by Shepard in qualifying established a new national record. He also ran over 177 miles an hour. The pair of Chevrolets blast off the starting line, and this is a close race. It's too close to call at this point, at the finish line, it's Lee Shepard by about a half a car length, 8.02 second elapsed time, his speed 174 miles an hour. As we watch again, both cars come off the starting line side by side. At this point, it's tough to tell who's ahead. As they head on down the racetrack, it's even tougher. And only when they get to the finish and we stop the action, three thousandths of a second quicker, Lee Shepard over Pat Musi. We're set now for the semi-final round of Pro Stock. These are called the factory hot rods. There are some limitations on them, but they present to the audience the classic battle of the make. The Ford Thunderbird of Bob Glidden warming his tires as he comes out of the water and heads toward the starting line. Glidden has had a very slow start this season, but the Thunderbird of the Glidden clan is coming back into its own winner of the last two NHRA national events. He'll be racing the man that comes into this event leading the points chase for the world championship, Frank Iaconio in the far lane driving the potent Chevrolet Camaro. The car is very evenly matched. 500 cubic inch engines, two four barrel carburetors running on gasoline. Iaconio is staged. Glidden is waiting momentarily. There could be a bit of a psychological battle. Now Glidden inches forward, and it's a good start for both cars. Very evenly matched as they head toward the finish line. It looks like Iaconio pulling ahead, but Glidden pulls it out. A great run for Bob Glidden and a tremendous win. 774 is elapsed time. His speed over 180 miles an hour. Let's look again. They leave the starting line as if they're one. The front wheels come back to the ground. They are accelerating, pulling the levers on the planetary transmission. The cars with a bit of advantage here to Frank Iaconio. You can see just about a fender length. But the horsepower of the Ford of Bob Glidden comes on and at the finish line just inches. Bob Glidden now moves into his seventh straight final round appearance at the U.S. Nationals. <laughs> Bob Glidden want to run over and have a chat with Iaconio. They're shaking hands. Good. These two have had some uh, pretty fierce wars on the starting line. You never know what that confrontation could have been. You didn't let him rush you this time. Well, I have him for some time. These daggone guys have been rough on me now. <laughs> Used you up. And, and Iaconio, I know they're going to leave on their best light when they race me. So uh, all I can do is take my time and do the best I can do. Bob Glidden, the best he can do, seven straight times in the finals. He'll be racing one of these two cars in the near lane. The world champion, the big number one, Lee Shepard, driving for the team of Rare and Morrison out of Dallas, Texas. Shepard is right on the heels of Frank Iaconio for the points chase. His competition from Westport, Massachusetts, comes Ronnie Manchester. 
Manchester using the Pontiac Trans Am body. It is Manchester against Shepard in the semifinals and a red light by Ronnie Manchester. Lee Shepard moves into the finals to race Bob Glidden. So we will have the classic matchup, the Ford versus Chevrolet in the finals at the U.S. Nationals as Bob Glidden goes off against Lee Shepard. Our congratulations to all the class winners, but now it's on to the Pro Stock Final. My favorite class, and we've got Lee Shepard going against Frank Iaconio. Lee Shepard has won eight of the last ten meetings they've had. Lee Shepard, the number one driver last year in Pro Stock. Going against Frank Iaconio from New Jersey, the number two driver last year. It's Texas against New Jersey. We'll see what happens. They get ready. And it's a good, clean start. Lee Shepard has the lead in the beginning. And it looks like he's going to beat Frank Iaconio if he holds on. And he does. Oh, what a close race. Lee Shepard starts his winning ways in 1984 the same way he left off in 83. Looking at the start, we see it's almost a perfect start. Both cars leaving the line almost simultaneously. The word in the pits was that if Frank Iaconio could not put a hole shot on Lee Shepard, he would not win this race because Lee Shepard has the faster car. We've been having the second round of Pro Stock Eliminator. In the factory hot rods in the near lane, it was Lee Shepard driving for the team of Rare and Morrison. The air lane racing against the Pontiac Firebird of Ronnie Manchester. The two cars came off the starting line relatively even, but it was not long before the power of the Oldsmobile took over, and by several car lengths, it was Warren Johnson taking the second round win over Ronnie Manchester. Our final pair in round number two of Pro Stock Racing found Joe Lapone Jr. driving a Pontiac in the near lane against the bright red Camaro owned by Bob Pinella and driven by the veteran Ken Dondero. Dondero had the slight advantage off the starting line. He held the lead at this point, but the power of Joe Lapone's car almost pulled out a win. Oh, so close at the finish. Look at the times. 7.79 for Lapone, Dondero at 7.82. The advantage off the starting line paid off. Well, this will turn you around. It's Pro Stock semifinal time. That's Bob Glidden. Just a pack of guys that have shown up at the Winter Nationals to scratch and claw their way to the Pro Stock title. Brock, let's see how our semifinalists got this far. This was second round. In the far lane, the fourth Thunderbird of Ricky Smith. Near lane, the incredible Warren Johnson in a brand new Oldsmobile. Ricky Smith off the starting line first, but Johnson simply out-muscled him to a 7.67, mile an hour win. The next race up in round number two earlier found Ken Don Darrow in the near lane Chevrolet Camaro. Don Coons from Indiana in a Firebird. Now a big hole shot for Don Darrow in the near lane. Watch the red car of Bob Pinella from Central California. Don Darrow off the mark first, and Don Coons simply could not run him down. Don Darrow went it at 7.75 seconds, 178 miles an hour. Then it was Butch Leo, the California Flash, driving his brand new Pontiac. We see it here in the far lane, taking on the world champion, Lee Shepard. 
Leal had some problems in the tech inspection area. Only got one qualifying run. But look at this. Through great driving, Butch Leal eliminates the world champion. Leal with a whole shot win at 7.69 to Shepard's quicker 7.66. Then it was time to again see the world's quickest driver. Bob Glidden had run 7.53 earlier. Here, he's in the far lane on his Ford Thunderbird. Up against Gordy Rivera in this beautiful Camaro. Now, Rivera, fearing Glidden's incredible elapsed time, was a little over anxious on the starting line. Here, you see he moved too quick. Bob Glidden wins this race via default and moves into the semifinal. Now we'll be seeing Bob Glidden, Whiteland, Indiana, five-time world champion, up against the lightning quick Ken Dondero. Boy, can that man drive. The other half of the semis, Warren Johnson's Oldsmobile versus Butch Leal's brand new Firebird. Well, this is what they love about Pro Stock. Not only their favorite drivers, but their favorite car makes. And this one is a classic confrontation Ford versus Chevrolet. Dondero in a new Camaro, beautiful automobile. There is Bob Glidden in that famous blue and white Ford Thunderbird. An automobile he had some problems getting dialed in when he first switched to it, but now he has got it hooked up, running like a train. Well, the driving talents of Ken Dondero, coupled with the tuning ability of Bill Grumpy Jenkins, makes the Bob Manello and Camaro a threat every time it goes to the starting line. Now, Glidden has a big performance advantage. He knows that. But Don Darrow is so good on the light that Glidden dare not be complacent. It was Don Darrow at first, but not for very long. Look at Bob Glidden in the far lane. He just demolishes Don Darrow with a 7.59 at only 171 miles an hour, meaning he got off the throttle early. 500 cubic inches of Ford power pulls it out. All right, here comes another master in the light, Butch Leal. Indeed, Butch Leal, a former Californian, now based in Blacklick, Ohio. This is a brand new car debuted here at the Winter Nationals. He's up against another brand new car, Warren Johnson's Oldsmobile. Brock had a look at it earlier. For a lot of years now, Warren Johnson has been facing a big handicap in pro stock competition. His Oldsmobiles, but big, wide cars, a lot of front end area, about as aerodynamic as barn doors, some people say. But now, Warren is back with a brand new model Oldsmobile. It's a Calais, very much narrower, shorter little automobile. And now, right now, he's in the in the forefront of aerodynamics, a, a handicap that he's faced over the last few years. So Warren Johnson, nice, clean, neat little Oldsmobile, ready to go pro stock racing this year. Well, here it sits in the far lane with Butch Leal in the near lane. Leal has done an amazing job with all the problems. He, oh, now Butch Leal makes a mistake. He went light. He might have been staged just a little deep, not having the run out he would have liked. But anyway, the red light glows on the tree. Warren Johnson saw it. Doesn't even bother to pull his parachute at 179 miles an hour. The Oldsmobile's got a good set of new brakes on it, I can tell you that. Here, now look again. Watch the white car to the left of your screen, and you see Leo left before the yellow light even went out. So he got caught with his hand in the cookie jar. So the Pro Stock final is set. Bob Glidden for Ford and Warren Johnson for General Motors.